Hey you guys, thank you for watching. Yvonne Blazquez here, certified personal trainer, exercise physiologist. Um, carbs, good, bad. McDougal, high carb, low fat, right? Thank you for coming to this video. This will be the most cutting edge video you have ever seen, I guarantee it. I, I'm so excited to share what I'm about to share right now because I guarantee you, you will leave this video knowing something you did not know and hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel because of this cutting edge content. I know I don't have the bells and whistles with all the technology and zoom in, zoom out, and some people do that with the computer and stuff, whatever. Let me get to the point, okay? So this, this um, video is called um, the new carb quality metric, or uh, that's not what it's called, but this is what I'm gonna be talking about, okay? So we're gonna be lo looking at McDougal's starch solution and how carbs are like, you know, been demonized and vilified by the low carb crowd. Well, this, I'm gonna slap some serious dead serious science to this argument, okay? There's a new carb quality metric. In fact, there was a research study that I just read where I uh, found this, um, this metric. I think it was 2016 study. By the way, look at the bottom of this video for all those studies. I will have them in the video description. So it's the starch to fiber ratio, okay? So let me just summarize what they said, that carbohydrate quality is extremely complex. You know, low glycemic, high glycemic, low glycemic load, high glycemic load. Okay, and thus far no individual nutrient or metric scale is able to summarize or evaluate all aspects of it in the diet. However, the starch to total fiber intake ratio appears to be a promising potential carbohydrate quality metric of the overall diet in relation to diabetes and related disease. Unlike the glycemic index, which characterizes the response of blood to, of blood to glucose, this ratio directly captures actual components or subtypes of carbohydrates. So um, anyhow, and, and what it says is diets higher in refined grains and lower in fiber, fruits and vegetables will have a higher starch to fiber ratio, whereas diets rich in whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables will have a lower ratio. So, and, it's, and it concluded as therefore, the starch to total fiber ratio may differentiate between diets of different carbohydrate quality. So let me explain all of this to you. First off, having a higher starch to fiber ratio leads to a lower quality of carbohydrates. Having a lower ratio, starch to fiber ratio is higher quality. And this has been associated with various health benefits but that I will be touching on. So for example, one cup of brown rice, right? That's a grain, good grain. I use brown rice instead of white rice because some people actually think white rice is good with the census data with Japan and stuff, although Dr. Gregor touches on that and how there's a difference between brown and white rice and how sometimes we need to like dig deeper to understand population data, not just report outcomes. We need to know why those outcomes occurred so we can get dig deeper and find truth. So one cup of brown rice is 45 grams of carbohydrates, okay? 3.5 grams of fiber in that and five grams of protein. Now we're just looking at carbs to fiber, but I'm gonna go ahead and I, I wanna add th protein in there because it's important. That's a 12.85 ratio, okay, of, of starch to fiber, okay? That's the ratio. Um, so all you do is you take total carbohydrates and you divide it by fiber and it gives you your ratio. Here we have one cup of lentils. 40 grams of carbs, 16 grams fiber, 18 grams protein, 2.5 is the ratio. Look what I just said. A lower ratio in, in, indicates higher quality carbohydrates. We'll look at the beans, 2.5, the rice, 12.85, okay? Also, there's another reason why a lot of vegans can't get real lean or lose weight, and I think this is a big component. It's not just refined versus, it's not just processed versus unprocessed. That doesn't really specify enough as this video does with the ratio of, of, of starch to, to fiber, okay? now. This cool little circle here, we're gonna to get to ad adiponectin. That's, that's gonna be my, my finisher, my final point. Look at this here. So we got potatoes, right? White potatoes, you know, supposed to be real good and healthy on a vegan diet. Well, I went ahead and, and, and actually, to your, to your peace of mind, I actually equalized this to 100 grams. So 100 grams of potato, 100 grams of butternut squash, and 100 grams of spaghetti squash. Again, the potato, 17 grams of carbs, and 100 grams, 2.2 grams fiber. That's a 7.7 .7 ratio. Now you have butternut squash. 12 grams carbs, two grams fiber, it's a six. It's lower than 7.7. .7. Now you have spaghetti squash. Seven grams of carbs, 1.5 grams fiber, 4.6. Do, do you see what I'm getting at? Do you see the science of fat loss here? Now let's go right into the finishing point. 
At, so I, before I go into, let me just let me just make this clear. The highest ratio of starch to fiber is in, is in grains, brown rice, and white potatoes. Those are staples in a lot of the low car, um, high carb, low fat, um, vegan, vegans and so forth. And I, and you know what? I may make a follow up to this on fruit, and 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 and, and that that'll, that'll be fascinating. Like bananas versus berries. Stay tuned for that video. So. You know what? I may just put that in a video description. We'll see. But anyway, adiponectin, guys, this is a fat-burning adipokine. Basically, it's a hormone that's secreted in the body, particularly by our adipose tissue. And what's interesting was the study found that a higher fiber intake was associated with higher adiponectin levels. Adiponectin is like this super fat-burning hormone in the body. Not only is it fat-burning, it's also anti-inflammatory, and it has antioxidant benefits. And it's also related to um, cardiovascular disease risk, which is fascinating stuff. So having higher levels of adiponectin are not only beneficial for fat loss, which is what we all want, but it's also beneficial for our health. And so it's clear that when we have a, a um, high starch to fiber ratio, we're gonna have lower levels of adiponectin, okay? Because the ratio of carbs to fiber is gonna be lower, okay? So this, auto, this video right here auto, is a game changer because I'm shining light and I'm gonna give due credit to the study that came up with this metric here because it's a phenomenal metric. People, people can hit the caveats on glymis, glycemic index and glycemic load. It's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's actually been studies that show that glycemic load, lower glycemic load is associated with higher adipone adiponectin. So we shouldn't, throw, we shouldn't throw out glycemic load or glycemic index completely out of the equation. But certainly, this ratio here that I've, that I've come with in this video and I've and I found from this study should give concrete, solid, evidence-based proof to the fact that being a nutritarian vegan which kind of eliminates the arbitrary caveat of being an unhealthy vegan or, or less than optimal health vegan, this, this ratio kind of, kind of cleans that up. So now we know what an actual clean carb is, okay? A clean carb is related to its fiber content, amongst other things like antioxidants and so forth. And I'd be willing to bet that carbohydrates that are higher in fiber are also higher in antioxidants and polyphenols. Um, so that being said, guys, feel free to leave, uh, leave comments below. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. Um, check out the study that, that devised this metric. And I'm so glad that I was able to share this. Again, this is just further credence to the fact of my channel being evidence-based and cutting edge. If you, want, if you want evidence-based content and I'm giving you stuff that I'm telling you, it's like this study was published in 2016, I believe. So, you know, sometimes studies get published and no one really brings them to light. Well, here I am in this video bringing it to light, okay? That's how I'm able to be a shredded vegan and have optimal health is because I understand the science of fiber and carbohydrate ratio, okay? Um, so with that, thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and just uh, did this, uh, the fruit starch to fiber ratio. We look at banana, right? Banana's huge in the, in the high carb, low fat um, vegan world. 23 grams carbs, 2.6 grams fiber, it's an 8.8 .8 ratio. Blueberries, now I equalize this to 100 grams per each, so serving sizes are exactly the same. Blueberries, 14 grams carbs, 2.4 grams fiber, 5.8. Raspberries, 12 grams carbs, 7 grams fiber, 1.7. See the science? Here's the science, okay? 8.8 .8 banana, 5.8 blueberries, 1.7 raspberries. Dr. Firm's nutritarian diet just, I mean, it, it metrically, scientifically, physiologically, metabolically, enzymatically, it, it, it just, it, it completely hits the heart of the issue, the science, the logic, okay? So this whole grain and high carb and potatoes and stuff, Science doesn't support it. So that's all I want to say about that. Okay, you guys, I want to make this clear. It's not that brown rice and white, white potatoes and bananas are bad for us. It's about, number one, the, you know the saying, the umbrella saying, all things in moderation? When you have people who are like eating like, you know, 10 or whatever, or eight bananas a day or loading up on potatoes and stuff, that violates the common sense 
science or logic of all things in moderation, okay? So when I eat a banana, it's not like I'm throwing it down like there's no tomorrow. Like I eat it prudently. I eat it sensibly. When I eat brown rice, I make sure it's part of, because brown rice, not only is it low in fiber, it's pretty much low in antioxidants. It has some, but not a lot. Whereas you have beans, beans have a whole bunch of other um, benefits and a lot more and a higher and a better nutrient profile. So I like to balance, I like to, I'm selective with my grains and I have these certain ratios. And this is easy stuff, guys. This is not like I'm measuring stuff and it's just like I'm in a lab. It's like, dude, it's like common sense. I look at the plate, less rice, more beans. It's also, nice. if you want to really kind of augment fat loss, eating a whole bunch of potatoes and bananas is not going to do it. I've talked about the ratio of starch to fiber and adiponectin. I mean, the science is clear as day, and it's con continue to, to reinforce itself. I'm open to learning, guys, but I'm telling you right now, I, I mean, it's just, I, I feel like this is like some sort of like educational epiphany, and it's just fantastic, um, and I feel real good about it, and I'm so glad this video is about to, is going to get published because it needs to be out there. Whether it gets a lot of people's attention, again, I'm not, it's not my responsibility to get people to watch it. It's, it's like, you know, you can lead a horse to water kind of thing. It's, it's my job to, prov to provide the information, the most accurate, up-to-date, evidence-based information available, and then you guys decide for yourselves. But I've already decided for myself. And so uh, I wouldn't share this if, if I didn't believe in it myself. And I think that should tell you something, okay? That it's, to me, it's, it's, it's about the greater good. It's not just about trying to like make money, get subs and all this stuff. That stuff comes naturally when you do a good job. So my, my primary focus is doing a good job, okay? That other stuff will come later. I'm not thinking about making money and then how can I do a good job. It's like you got to earn the money. You got to do a good job first, and that's what I'm that's what I'm focused on. So thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time.